I'm James, James Garner, born in, in Ireland on 31st of August 1932. It's a small town. I went to school there and uh, did some work, work for farmers. No uh, big industries or nothing, they're just a small place and people, everybody knew everybody. People were simple. At that time, things in Ireland was very slow, and we uh, the county we had no electricity, and uh, you got the, the water from a well, like you know, and uh, and that's where you lived. Stay there until I was twenty. I said, "Hey, there's nothing here." I got to find some, someplace else. In England, I worked on construction, on jobs in different towns. Stayed in England then for 52, five years. I came to Canada and, uh, by boat and arrived in Quebec City. Then I heard there was, were, they were hiring people in Sudbury, in the nickel industry. So I went there. I got a job there. Then I stayed until June of the next year and left for, for Alberta. I went to Edmonton and I worked got a, a job with a farmer. And I stayed there for just six weeks. Then I got a, a, a word of this dew line. In this grim and forbidding Arctic waste, a top priority defense project is being rushed to completion. Known as Operation Dew Line, due for distant early warning, it is the construction of a string of radar bases. Building in these frigid latitudes becomes a test of men and machines. Almost every type of terrain is encountered from ice hundreds of feet thick to Arctic tundra. The thickness of the ice must be tested for landing strips and radio towers must withstand howling Arctic gales. I went to the office there where they were the doing the hiring and, and got a, a plane and uh, went to... They didn't tell you, it was, uh, it was on the RCMP and they, you know, and uh, they just said pin one. That's all they knew, you had no... What, <laughs> well, I couldn't tell you where it was in the, in the Northwest Territories. Mixed concrete. In a machine, like you know, you put sand and gravel and cement and put a foundation to build for the builder. Insulation also, when, once they finished the building, like you know, then after insulated and, and, that, and, that, and that's what I did. In the camps of the construction contractors, living conditions were primitive. But already, the crews were changing the face of that far north country. The crews built roadways, developed water supply sources, laid down building foundations, and made the beaches ready for the sea lifts. But the crews could not wait longer to start on a steel tower work. They blasted holes for the foundations out of the frozen earth. They mixed concrete and heated tents. As they poured the concrete in the bitter cold, they kept it from freezing by pumping in heat under tarpaulins. With the foundations in, the tower work went steadily forward. And then a year later, obsolete. It had the, what do you call them, the satellites took care of that, and that was it. And you worked there and as a laborer until the end of November. Then come back down to Scarry and then I come to Toronto. And I worked on all kinds of bridges that all over, like you know, and anywhere. I worked in places in Ontario and it was only there for such a short time, I can't tell you where the hell it was. <laughs> I 
What I did mostly in construction was pile driving and caissons. It goes down to, to where bedrock, like so. And you drive, you have a, have a pile hammer, a hammer, like, you know, it goes up and down, a big piston, and drives, drives it right down through the dirt. And the other one then is caissons. You have a drill, and it goes down, uh, uh, a big pipe around it. And then uh, is, you put a steel cage inside that and you pour concrete on it. All the gardener, most all, pile driving. I worked on the Gardener Expressway. It'd be in the 50s, the late 50. I wasn't in the subway for a long time. And at the end, uh, it started at Queen's Park. There and went down south. I was just a miner, we kept going. And you have compressors outside, and the hose just comes in, connected to the air spade, and you just get mining and mining, knocking it down, mine the dirt down, and the, the laborers would fill up the, the carts, they would transport it out, and kept on going. And the last job I worked on was the subway down the way, they take all the state. That's the last job I worked on. I mean, it's changing like machines now can do the work that people used to do. You know, none of these jobs are disappearing. And it's not a good idea. These machines are doing all these things. <laughs> Nobody can be seen on these machines. And that's no good because you have to, you, know, you, you can't, if, if you're making something to sell, you have to have a buyer. And if you have no buyer, you can't do the hell with the machines. <laughs> so that's the way I see it.